Oh, hi, welcome to Game Creation. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at the start of scrolling. Now, uh, in the video on Monday, I talked about the fact that scrolling is all about having kind of two screen sizes, the screen size the player is shown and the actual screen size that exists in your game world. Um, and we're going to be setting that up so that we have our window as as a player that we can actually see and our game world size. Now, we're not going to be using the exact game size we're committing to for the rest of our lives, but we're going to build this in a way that we know where to go to to extend the world and to make sure that it, it fits nicely. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let's go to the screen. Um, so the first thing we're going to be doing is having a look at what we've got already. So we're just going to click on the uh, frame that we've got. Now, we know that this um, game is going to be done in 1920 by 1080. Again, I said down the line, we want this to be adaptive because if you see it on a 4K screen, it will look naff. Uh, and maybe I'll do a video on that later because um, there's a really, really good object, we uh, like a uh, extension that we can use for that. Um, but for now, we're happy with that because we're looking at minimum viable product and that is just to get this working on this monitor here. So you might notice that there's something called virtual width and virtual height. So let's change the virtual width um, to, I don't know, um, let's change it to 50 and change the virtual height to 50. And let's run the application. Okay, that's strange. <laughs> so what's happened is that we've got a window that is apparently 50 by 50, <laughs> but I'm not 100% sure that was 50. Let's do it one by one and see what happens. I've never done this before. Always good to experiment. So the game itself is not letting me pick that small uh, a, a window because it's like, no, you're not going to have less than whatever this resolution is here. So presumably you can't have a virtual width less than a certain amount. But you can see the point that the virtual window is around here. So nothing actually exists beyond that. So as soon as I move out of that virtual window, it's gone. It's not, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, so that's what a virtual width and height is. It's the actual um, space within the game land. Now, always you will want the virtual width and virtual height to be bigger than um, the client area, bigger than your, your visual kind of game because the whole point of using virtual width and virtual height is that your game area can be bigger um, than um, what you can see. So what I'm going to do is just double both of these. So we're going to do 38, 40, and then, uh, where is it, 2160, if my math is right. Please comment in the, uh, or write a comment if that's not correct, hopefully it is. So if I run the application now, we won't see a blinding bit of difference. Yeah, so I can still walk about. Now, what you might notice is I can actually walk out and then in again, because I'm technically still in the game area. Okay, But it's important to know that there's this screen here that you can see. There's another one of these below this one, another one of these to the right of this one, and another one of these to the bottom right. So we've actually got four of these in our game world. And when we do scrolling in the next couple of videos, we will be able to scroll all the way down here and then all the way down beneath this one again and same with the right and same with the bottom right. So that is what um, virtual uh, width and virtual height do. And it, it's so easy. Click to make this so, so easy um, because you can actually add objects to the virtual area. What um, is frustrating is it doesn't actually show the virtual area um, on here, um, but it is there. Uh, and that's why it's really good to think programmatically about this. Now, the second bit we've got to start thinking about, and we'll do more of this in the next video, is if the size of this is 64, we want the tiles to fit across and down. So if I go back to the resolutions I've made, I get my trusty calculator out, and I do 3840, and I divide it by 64, it gets 60. So that's perfect, that works really well. 
And if I do 2160 divided by 64, it doesn't work so well. It gets 33.75. So I probably want 33. So I'll do 33 times 64. And that gets me 2112. So to make the tiles fit nicely in this, I've got to just make that slightly more or slightly less than double the 1080 there. Otherwise, if I scroll over to the right, I'll kind of have a little bit of gap left over or a tile that is kind of disappearing into nothingness, uh, which might not be ideal for the game. You might be able to run it um, with that, but it might not be ideal for the game. So just always have a calculator handy when you're doing this because it's actually quite useful to be able to do some quick calculations. Now, what you might say is, well, hang on, what happens if we change this 64? Um, what if we change it to something else? And that's actually a very valid point. And so what we might want to do is make sure um, that it is uh, configurable to the maximum that might be. Because we're um, picking uh, factors, or sorry, multiples of two, um, if it if it can work with 64 then it can work with 8 then it can work with 4 then it can work with 2 so it doesn't actually matter whether we go down but just because it works with 64 pixels there's a 50 50 chance whether it works with 128 um so the so let's have a look 3840 so if we decided uh, 3840 divided by, if we decided that we wanted 128 pixel tiles, that works perfectly. And 2112 divided by 128. Uh, the 2112 doesn't work perfectly. We'd end up with half a, a tile. So I don't, I, I'm never going to go to 128 pixels. I, I think 64 is, is, if anything, a little bit big. If we show it again, if anything, those tiles. Mm, they, yeah, they might be a little bit big, uh, if anything. I think I'd be going downwards rather than upwards um, with the size of the sprite. Uh, I might leave the player that size, but the um, grass and stuff and whatever the background's going to be, um, it's going to look way too big. So I'd probably be going downwards, if anything. Um, so 64 is my maximum, so I'd stick with that. Um, but I'm probably going to be using 32... Or 16 probably um, but that's a decision that I don't need to make because as we did before all you have to do is go and change the grid size to whatever you want so 32 I hope this works <laughs> and it's not hooked up at all why is that not hooked up that's outrageous I thought I hooked that up let's have a look there we are grid size divided by 64 um, That should work. Why hasn't that worked? The tile creation. Ah, that's why that hasn't worked because I only did that for the starting tile. There we are, I've already found a bug. And I should, uh, so what I've done is clicked on that Control and C and I've Control and V and I've got it so that when it's actually created it does that. So let's have a look now. Perfect. And let's make sure that um, the position isn't times 64. It's times the far, the um, retrieval label value, the grid size. Always pays to check your code and test it. There we are. Found a bug in this perfect look at that so you can imagine some nice little grass um, um, sort of artwork there and that actually might look might look pretty good but because of the size I've made the virtual world we know that those tiles will fit so when 64 fits 32 will fit because obviously for every 64 it's just two of those so if 64 um, size tiles can work then those will Sorry for the maths lesson, but <laughs> what can you do? Um, if, you've, uh, if I've said anything that you want to comment on, either positively or critically, please do so in the comments below. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7pm UK time. Thank you.